Everything's all right, cause in my heart, I know that I am saved. Oh, and how I long to do God's will. Yes, I know I fail Him still, but I'm so glad that His grace Troubles come against me, and I feel so overwhelmed when it seems the more I try giving, my troubles seem to swell. And when I've reached the end of me, and my faith is getting dim, oh, I hear a sweet voice whisper, just bring it all to him, so I'll just bring it all. Bring it all to him. In the throne room of my Savior, I find sweet relief. I find strength to bear my burdens. I find comfort for my grief. And when my cup is overflowing.
prophecy or fancy miracle for all to see just the words go down seven times so as Naaman made his way into the Jordan River that day I can't help but think what was on his mind as he slowly reached the water's edge it rushes in over his head he looks to see if the curse has washed away oh does he say i keep going down and getting back up but i see no change i feel no touch from you lord where could you be this water's dirty and it's cold but there's healing in it so i'm told a miracle but i've yet to see but i'm staying here until you're through until i get a hold of you i'm gonna keep believing but until then i'm gonna go dead deep inside I've heard your voice a thousand times but now it seems so long ago oh and I'm still trying to believe that somehow you're listening but I would like a sign so I could know oh surely just forget I'm fighting on my knees to get to you so this is what I'm gonna do I'll keep going down and getting back up till I see a change or feel a touch from you I know you're hearing me this place is lonely and it's cold but it's holy ground so i'm told the secret place where you will meet with me so i'm staying here until you're through until i get a hold of you i'm gonna keep believing but until then i'm gonna go down again I see a change or feel a touch from you Cause I know you're hearing me Oh, this place is lonely And it's cold, but it's holy ground So I'm told the secret place Where you will meet with me So I'm staying here until you're through Until I get working in town one afternoon attending 
some business affairs I heard a commotion a couple streets over I wondered what's happening there a young man was running from in that direction and stopped just to catch his breath I asked him to please tell me what was the hurry he smiled up at me and he said I was trying to catch the crippled man Did he run past this way? He was rushing home to tell everyone What Jesus did today And the mute man was telling myself and the deaf girl He's leaving to answer God's call it's hard to believe, but if you don't trust me, ask the blind man, he saw it all. Ask the blind man, he saw it all. My friend, if the troubles and burdens you carry are heavy and dragging you down, You've tried everything you can possibly think of But there's no relief to be found That very same Jesus that altered the future of the blind man, the deaf and the lame Is still reaching out in your hour of trouble One touch and you're never the same And you'll be trying to catch the crippled man, did he run past this way? He was rushing home to tell everyone what Jesus did today. And the mute man was telling myself and the deaf girl he's leaving to answer God's call. It's hard to believe, but if you don't trust me, Someone asked me to try him just one more time. Little did I know this friend I had forsaken would be sitting on the same pew as mine. He didn't say you're sorry for giving up on me. I just felt his tender embrace. He said, remember all the times you were down in the valley, I covered you with my grace. It was then I recalled the times of my struggles. It was God who had carried me through. I said, Lord, I'm so sorry. If you'll please forgive me, here's what I'm going
Amen. Good morning. Good to be in the Lord's house. Amen. Amen. We appreciate you being here. Appreciate the goodness of God allowing us one more time to be in his house this morning. Uh, we love each and every one of you. We're thankful for the day the Lord has given us uh, another opportunity to be in his house. Amen. I can't think of nowhere else I'd rather be this morning. Amen. Uh, just by way of announcement, just a couple things I want to give you. Uh, don't forget, uh, we're going to have our workshop following the banquet today. Uh, the banquet will be right after the service this morning. Uh, we appreciate, amen, the family also for bringing all the uh, fine food, all the fine goods and everything like that. That's a great uh, testament of this church, and we appreciate all that you do for Brother Ethan. I appreciate all that's going to be done here. Uh, again, the workshop will be taking place uh, this afternoon right after the banquet's over. Uh, it won't take too awful long. Then we'll have choir practice following that. Uh, and then we're just going to jump into the business meeting tonight uh, right at the very end of service uh, or in, into the evening service. So again, don't forget about that. Make sure you're here. Uh, looking forward to what the business meeting is going to hold tonight. Uh, looking forward to our budget for the year coming on and the elections getting things in position and in place ready to serve the Lord. Amen. Uh, don't forget forget coming up this Saturday will be our breakfast benefit for the building fund. Uh, amen. We're praying that God just sends a mighty wave of uh, people that, that we may fellowship and reach. I, I am more interested in reaching people than reaching into their pockets. When you come, when they come in the door, amen, don't reach for their pocket, amen, reach for their heart, and I believe God will do the work there, uh, and amen, if they give along the way, that's a blessing, amen, we, we, we take all blessings that come in, uh, but we're excited about that, don't forget, if you have signed up for something, make sure you bring it in, uh, this will be a good week to bring in that bacon, that sausage, uh, I don't know why I talk about food, every morning I get up here. Gets me hungry instantly, and amen. I can smell the food from back here, amen. Uh, so don't forget about that. Uh, excited about that. Also, uh, make sure you can volunteer some time. Uh, we're going to need some assistance in serving, uh, doing some wipe down, sanitation, things of that nature uh, to make sure we're operating in the safe capacity in which we should. Uh, amen. If you know how to cook, we'll use you. If you know how to pour a drink, we'll use you. Uh, if you know how to just smile and tell somebody that God loves them, we can use you. So amen. That should be everybody. Amen. All right. So don't forget about that this upcoming Saturday. Also, this upcoming Sunday on the 3rd, uh, this next Sunday, uh, Brother Reuben Cason will be with us here that Sunday morning. You'll be in prayer for that. Uh, excited about having Brother Reuben, amen, the state representative of North Carolina here with us uh, to spread the work, amen, and represent the gospel of Jesus Christ. So you be praying for the service. Invite someone to be with you. Uh, amen. It's a great honor to have him with us. And then that Sunday evening, we'll be uh, over at Hudson Memorial. Uh, as a church, we're going to do a joint service with them. Our choir will be singing over there. Uh, Brother Troy's going to be doing some specials. Uh, we'll be preaching that night, amen, to kick off that revival. Uh, we pray that God would just bless in a mighty, mighty way, amen. So don't forget about that. If you show up here, I can't tell you what's going to happen. God can show up in the parking lot, though. I do know that. Amen. Uh, so, amen, if you can, you will come join us over at Hudson Memorial, uh, 726 Warlick Road. Amen. All right. Let's stand to our feet. Let's go to Lord in prayer. Amen. Uh, ask him to have right away in this service. We need his touch and we need his help this morning. Uh, again, we're so thankful and so honored to have each and every one of you. Uh, we pray that God has blessed you tremendous, tremendously this week. Uh, looking forward to the good things to come. Amen. My precious Heavenly Father, Lord, how we do love you. And God, we thank you again for the privilege and yet again the opportunity to be in your house. Uh, God, we thank you for these that have come this way. God, we thank you for those not only in this room, but God, those that will be joining us on live today. Uh, God, we pray that a blessing will befall each and every one of us. God, I pray that this would be the day that you search the pew and search the aisle. Uh, God, remind them that God are not saved. They need to be saved. And God, remind us that have been saved, redeemed, and bought by the blood how good your grace and mercy is. God, I pray, Lord, that you would touch every part of this service. God, for from the choir songs uh, to the offering to every testimony to every word uttered from the preacher. Uh, God, just have your way in each and everything that we do. We'll be careful to praise you. Thank you for all that you are. In Jesus' my name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. And amen. Grab your songbook. Amen. Let's turn to page 648. Amen. Page 648 this morning. You sing loud this morning, amen. Some glad morning when this life is o'er, I'll fly away to a home on God's celestial shore. I'll fly away, I'll fly away, oh glory, I'll fly away. When I die, hallelujah, by and by, I'll fly away. When the 
shadows of this life have grown, I'll fly away like a bird from prison bars has flown. I'll fly away, I'll fly away, oh glory, I'll fly away. When I die, hallelujah, by and by, I'll fly away. Just a few more weary days and then I'll fly away to a land where joy should never end. I'll fly away. I'll fly away. Oh, glory. I'll fly away. When I die, hallelujah, by and by, I'll fly away. Amen. Look to your left, your right, front, behind you. Wave at somebody. Smile at them real big. Let them know you're glad to see them. Amen. And just wave at them till they wave back at you. Amen. 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 While they're waving, amen, we're going to let the choir come on up. Uh, get assembled this morning, amen. We're appreciative of the choir, uh, able to lift our songs unto the Lord and sing unto him uh, for all his goodness and his mercy. Uh, amen. We pray that God would just bless in a mighty, mighty way here this morning. Amen. Oh, good looking crowd this morning. Amen. Amen. Here comes our bass singers right there. Amen. Bless them, Lord. Amen. All right. Hey man, have your way, Lord. Never fails me. All my days. 
has been good to us. Amen.
of God. Amen. Uh, there is none comparable unto him for what he's done for us. And we've got more than 10,000 reasons unto worship him. Amen. He's been good to us beyond measure, beyond count. Uh, amen. Just for the fact that he got you up this morning. Amen. Put breath in your body. Allowed you to come to the house of God. Amen. What a good God we serve this morning. Amen. Uh, if I can have a couple ushers. Amen. We'll take up tithe and offering. Uh, give you an opportunity to give unto the Lord. You give as God would have you to this morning. Uh, you be obedient and cheerful in your giving. Uh, God will take it and he'll bless it. Uh, amen. He will multiply it here this morning. Amen. Amen. Brother Ethan, you say a blessing over us often, brother. Sometimes I feel the weight of every trial So I count the cost and trust you as your child I saw your crown of thorns, how you gladly wore it Every cross I bear, I'm stronger for it Amen. Make me Amen. Appreciate you giving, amen. Appreciate your obedience unto the Lord. Uh, amen. We're going to do our penny march, amen. We'll stand to our feet. Uh, amen. You got some pennies, some quarters, some nickels, some dimes, ones, fives, tens, twenties, fifties, hundreds, whatever God tells you to give, you give it. Uh, it goes for a great thing for our scholarship fund, for our young people, uh, amen, that are members of this church going on to that next level of education. We want to be a blessing and a help unto them. So you give as the Lord have you this morning. Uh, amen. We'll stand. We'll sing. This is the day the Lord has made. You just mind the Lord and you're giving this morning. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in Him, and be glad in Him. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad. and be glad in it this is the day this is the day that the Lord has made amen be seated if you can uh, amen I started out with some money in my pocket you'd have thought my wife come up here oh there she is amen amen it's something when the kids come by and just hold their hand out like they expect something amen that's how we ought to come to church with our hands lifted expecting something from the Lord amen you come hungry amen you'll be fed amen Amen. Anybody got a song or a testimony in their heart this morning? I don't want to uh, hold nobody back. Amen. I do want to be obedient to the Lord uh, and all that we do here. And amen. And maybe, maybe God's just blessed you so much this week. Maybe you got to say something about it. Amen. Anybody at all? Go ahead, sis. Amen. Amen. 
That's right, sis. Yeah. Amen. 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 Bible says we ought to give thanks in everything, amen, not to leave any details out. God's been certainly good to us, amen. Anybody else this morning? Don't want to get in everybody's way. Maybe God's just blessing you. Maybe you can't handle it. All right. Only once, going twice sold. All right, amen. I gave you a chance. Now, amen, give me a chance this morning just to brag on the Lord, amen. If you have your Bibles, go with me to the book of Ruth, chapter number 2. Uh, last Sunday night, I, I talked about the things that you will find down in Moab, and I'm one of those kind of guys. I like finishing what I start, and I felt as if I felt as if uh, I got to a place where I didn't tell the rest of the story, and I don't want to leave something undone. And I believe this is what God is leading us to this morning. Uh, amen. I believe this is for somebody this morning, and I believe this will help you uh, in each and every way of your life. Amen. It'll be a reminder for some. It will be also a calling unto yourself uh, to be reminded of the goodness of God, amen, what he's done and what he's able to do here this morning, amen. But the book of Ruth, chapter number 2, I want to begin reading in verse number 10. Nursery is open, by the way, amen. We'll make that known, amen. If you got one that's five and under, amen, you're free to turn them loose, amen. I can out-preach youngins, though, don't worry about it, amen. All right. Book of Ruth, chapter number 2. Verse number 10, amen. Book of Ruth, chapter number 2, verse number 10 this morning, amen. I love the book of Ruth. It's a powerful book. It's an awesome book, uh, amen. A lot of New Testament revelation is in this Old Testament setting. Book of Ruth, chapter number 2, verse number 10. If you have your place, would you shout an amen so loud that it terrifies the devil this morning? The Bible says, Then she fell on her face and bowed herself to the ground and said unto him, Why have I found grace in thine eyes, that thou shouldest take knowledge of me, seeing I am a stranger? Boaz answered and said unto her, It hath fully been shown me all that thou hast done unto thy mother-in-law since the death of thine husband, and how thou hast left thy father and thy mother and the land of thy nativity, and come now art unto a people which thou knowest not heretofore. The Lord recompense thy work, and a full reward be given thee of the Lord God of Israel, under whose wings thou art come to trust. Then she said, Let me find favor in thy sight, my Lord, for that thou hast comforted me, and for thou hast spoken friendly unto thine handmaid. Thou, I, that I, though I be not like unto one of thine handmaids, Boaz said unto her at mealtime, Come thou hither. 
and eat of the bread, and dip thy morsel in the vinegar. And she sat beside the reapers, and he reached her parched corn, and she did eat. And was sufficed, and then she left. My precious heavenly Father, Lord, I do love you. God, I thank you for the reading of your word this morning. God, I pray, Lord, that you would give me the increase this morning. God, anoint me from the crown of my head, Lord, to the sole of my feet, that, God, I may preach exactly what needs to be said. Uh, God, I don't know the need of this message, but, God, I know you've sent it this way for such a time as this. God, I pray that this would go beyond the ears. God, find a lodging place uh, down deep in the heart. God, I pray, Lord, that you would search the pews and the aisles here this day. God, I pray that there be one that's lost and undone amongst us. Uh, God, that you would save them before it's too late. God, I pray if there's one that's backslidden and cold and indifferent, that, God, that you would pull them back to the fold one more time. God, I pray for every sinner, for every saint, that, God, that your blessings would befall each and every one of us. And, God, we'll be careful to praise you, not seek no glory for in ourselves, but give you all the glory, for it's yours and yours alone. We ask all these things in the name above every name, the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. All God's people shouted. Be seated if you can. I am interested in what we see here in verse number 10 and number 14. Uh, verse number 10, Then she fell on her face and bowed herself to the ground and said unto him, Why have I found grace in thine eyes, that thou shouldest take knowledge of me, seeing I am a stranger? She asked the very same question that every born-again child of God has asked. And if you have not asked that question, don't think so highly of yourself. What in the world makes you think you're so good that God should take interest in you? But boy, aren't you glad that he loves you enough huh, that he come down and took interest in you one day. Huh? Yep, you are a stranger unto him. Huh? Oh, but God found favor on you. Huh? I want to preach to your heart just a simple little thought this morning. Huh? When the Savior huh, reached down for me. Huh? When the Savior huh, reached down for me. Huh? When you go to verse number 14, huh, it says, And Boaz said unto her, At mealtime come hither, huh, and eat of the bread, huh, and dip thy morsel in the vinegar. Huh? And she sat beside the reapers, and he reached her parched corn, and she did eat, and was sufficed, and she left. This is one of the most beautiful pictures, I believe, that we can find in the Old Testament of that powerful word, grace. It, the word grace is literally found in all four chapters of the book of Ruth. For these four chapters, they highlight the Old Testament uh, truths of what New Testament life we live in today. You and I, we live in a thing called grace this morning. Uh, we live in the mercy and the kindness of God. Uh, we have been redeemed this morning. Uh, and the Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord uh, say so this morning. Uh, honey, I'll say this. Uh, this is what Jesus done for us in the New Testament. What Boaz is about to perform in her life Jesus performed in our lives. You say, preacher, I don't see the resemblance. Just give me a minute, maybe you will. But I'll tell you like this, Ruth grows from being worthless to being wealthy. It's got to go. You and I this morning, honey, I know that you may feel like there's not a lot of value and a lot of worth to you. You may feel like you're at the bottom of the barrel. You may feel like there's not a lot to you. But honey, unto him you were worth dying for this morning. I, honey, I'm glad that I was drafted into the family. I, I was worthless. I, oh, but praise God, my soul I, has wealth overlasting this morning. I, I'm glad I, I'm in the family of God. I, hey, I, I'm glad I, he reached down for this old sinner one day. I wish I had a witness this morning. Maybe he ain't reached down for you just yet. But honey, I'll tell you this, you ain't outside the reach of God this morning. Honey, can I say that Ruth goes from being worthless to being wealthy? Everything that Boaz has now belongs to her. I wish I had some help this morning. You realize that we became joint heirs to the throne of God when we got saved? That means that everything that's the sons is now ours. Everything that the Father has, it will become ours. We have a shared kindred. We have a kinsman redeemer that came down in the middle of our worthlessness and he made us wealthy beyond measure. You can't look and tell today, but I'm richer than anybody I know simply because not what's in my wallet, not what's on my key ring, but because of what lies. I, down deep in my heart this morning I, I'm glad I, for the mercy of God in my life this morning 
Everything that belongs to Boaz becomes hers. But she had nothing. Sister Allison, she, she was a nobody, headed nowhere. She had nothing to claim of her own. She was just in the middle of a famine down in Moab. All she knows is, all she's got so far is Naomi. And knowing Naomi's just in a bad mood, in a bad way, and all she knows is she's getting ready to go to a land that's not her own, but she is looking for something when she goes. And honey, I'm here to tell you what Jesus done for us is we didn't know what we was getting ourselves into on a Sunday morning at way of the cross, but we just showed up. And I'm glad for the Redeemer that was here waiting on you. And when he calls you by name, don't wait for the preacher to invite you to an old-fashioned altar. If the kinsman Redeemer is calling your name, you need to get up and go where he is this morning. He knows your name, by the way. How in love is he with you? I'm glad you asked. He knows the hairs on your head. He knows more about you than anybody that's ever said they loved you knows about you. He cares more than anybody else has ever, ever cared for you. She has nothing. She is what we refer to in the Bible as a Gentile. But she goes from being a Gentile. She goes from being a pauper to a princess. <laughs> uh, she goes from being bitter to being blessed. Well, bless God, she goes from the field down to the feet of Boaz. She goes from a widow in chapter number one to having a great wedding in chapter number four. Honey, I tell you, that sounds a lot like you and I when the Savior reached down. Honey, we were widows and orphans, but I'm glad for the Master who came by our way and showed us loving kindness and drafted us into the family. I didn't earn it. I don't deserve it. But thanks be unto God, He gave it willingly this morning morning. He didn't have to. I was a pauper at one time. I was bitter one time. I was out in the field one time. Oh, but look, what you know what she is? Can I talk Burke County this morning? Y'all go there all the time. Y'all know y'all, right? Big, robust area of Burke County. This is what we say. She's a pretty pitcher. I didn't say she's pretty. She's a pretty pitcher. That P-U-R-T-Y stuff. She is a pretty picture of you and I. She is a beautiful, pretty picture of what God done in our life. In the four chapters of Ruth, we see that God unravels a plan of grace. And the whole reason she's able to obtain this is because somebody reached down for her. Honey, the whole reason she's able to have what she has is because Boaz reached down for her. She could not fix herself in chapter number one. She was in a mess. There was no hope or no help. But honey, can I tell you, when you put your foot in the right direction, headed to the house of God, headed to Bethlehem, him, Judah. It just takes one step in the right direction and God can turn your life around. You may have come and you're in a mess this morning. Your finances may be all over the place. Your marriage may be on the rocks. You may have wayward children. You may yourself be in a mess that you wouldn't dare tell nobody about. But can I tell you God specializes in messes this morning. He specializes in broken this morning. He's a specialist that you don't have to pay a copay. Just come unto him and he'll give you rest this morning casting all our cares on him for he careth for you this morning I'm glad I serve someone that can reach down to me she is not broken beyond repair you and I this morning we're not broken beyond repair and honey you can be saved and still be broken I'm going to look at y'all like y'all looking at me yep you, you can be saved and be broken you can be saved and have a bad day. You can be saved and have a bad year. You can know the goodness of God and sing all the songs in the choir and still have bad things in your life. But you're not beyond repair. Uh, there's never been a time that God could not put you back together. And honey, he don't use super glue. He uses his darling lamb's blood that puts all things back together. For those that are broken this morning, I'm talking to you. Honey, you might think you're broke now, but give it to God and you'll come out better than when you were first broken. Oh, he specializes in reaching down into broken messes. Honey, can I say this? The Bible says in verse number 14, 
that Boaz reached her parched corn. He reached out and handed her fresh roasted corn right into her hand. The Bible says in verse 14 that she was sitting beside the reapers. And Boaz has invited her to come and sit at his table. She sat at the table as the lowest outcast. The Gentile, the one at the back of the line, the one that was a foreigner that nobody wanted anything to do with, she's at the very back of this line. The Bible shows us that Boaz is at the head of the table. Brother Troy, when I saw this, I, I had myself a fit. Brother, here is the Redeemer at the head of the table. He's the boss. He's the one in charge of all things. He's the one, you know, the earth's footstool in heaven is his throne. He's that God. And he's at the head of his table. And the Bible shows us in verse 14 that even though Boaz was at the head of the table, she was at the end of the table. But Sister Lindsay, he was able to reach her even though she was at the far back of that line. Can I tell you something? You're not outside the reach of God this morning. You might think that you're at the back of the line. You might think you're the lowest of low. You might think you're crazy this morning. You might think that you ain't got a business one being in the house of God. But honey, you've come to the right place. Because he's at the head of the table, he can reach to the bottom of the table if he's got to. You might be sitting here and you say, well, preacher, I'm just like that. I'm just a Gentile. So were we all. So were we all. We were all at the bottom at one time. We were all looking up just to see bottom, some of us. But honey, I'm glad for the time that I was able to reach out and feel a hand that saved my soul. Uh, honey, when I could not reach him, uh, he could reach me this morning. Uh, thank God for the Redeemer. Uh, that no matter where you think you are in line, uh, no matter what class you think you are, uh, what side of the tracks you grew up on, uh, that there's a God that can reach right where you are this morning. Uh, honey, even at the head of the table sat the Redeemer. Uh, but where he is, uh, she might seem distant this morning. Uh, if you look at the picture, she sits down by the reapers. Uh, probably has social distancing down to a science. Uh, probably set a good six feet beyond them but I'm glad for God who don't know anything about distance but he knows how to reach out and get a hold of somebody's life I'll say this this morning hey Boaz was still able to reach her you say preacher how how in a powerful spot in a preeminent spot in a prominent spot is he able to reach a poor spot like that brother Troy you can't get from there unless you get up. But you know how good God is? Sometimes he'll let you sit there and he'll come straight to you. Honey, there's times where I've needed God to come to me because I felt like I couldn't take another step. And honey, can I tell you this? That's no excuse for you to sit there and wait on God to do something in your life. But honey, let me say this. If you're at the bottom of your barrel, you just got to the top of God's barrel. It may seem like the last. It may seem like you ain't got nothing left. You may be thinking, I can't take another step. I can't go back to church. Then people will talk about me. Honey, let them talk because they talk at Walmart too. I'm glad to tell you this. Honey, if they're the ones talking, they need the altar worse than you do. But understand this. There's a God that does not care about what everybody else says. There's a God that don't care about your class or your situation or your color or your creed but he is interested in you this morning I'm glad for a God that can reach down and I can't reach him Boaz had to leave his powerful spot to go to the poorest spot he had to leave his powerful preeminent spot to reach down to the poorest soul in that entire place you say preacher there's no way that God would do that for me just cry out he'll come running your way I'm a living testimony that if you'll just cry out, amen, he'll come where you are. Uh, honey, can I say this? Uh, that's what Jesus done for me. Uh, I was lost as I could be, uh, and he left the top uh, to come down to the bottom. Good God Almighty, uh, I'm glad he stepped through the portals of glory uh, and the balconies of heaven, uh, and he took off his robe of righteousness. Uh, he that was rich uh, became poor, uh, and he didn't do it for him. Uh, he did it for me, uh, and he did it for you, uh, that you might one day uh, be able to take a hand and reach the darling Lamb of God this morning. Boaz goes to where she is. Sounds a lot like what Jesus done for me. I couldn't get to heaven. There's no way I could do it on my own. Boy, when I couldn't get to heaven, he left heaven to come to me. I'm glad for the day he stepped through the portals of glory and came down as a little baby and was born as a Savior. 
Honey, let me say this. I was on my way to hell without hope, without God, and he reached way down for me. He imputed his grace upon me, and he did not do it because I was good. He did not do it out because I was holy. He didn't do it because of my pedigree. He didn't do it because of my last name. He just done it because he's that good this morning. I'm glad for a God who's so good to reach down to the lowest of all of us this morning. You say, preacher, you're getting out of out of hand. Don't you know we got dinner back there? Well, excuse me. I just can't hold my peace. I told us Wednesday night about the stone. The Bible says that Jesus over in Luke 19 40 was making his triumphal entry into the city and the Bible says the disciples got beside themselves. They began to shout of the things they had seen and the works performed by God. And all of a sudden those multitudes of Pharisees came out and said, why don't you tell them disciples to shut up? He said, if I tell them to shut up, these stones will begin to cry out. I'm glad this morning for what God has done for me. I'm glad for our Savior that reached way down for me and redeemed my everlasting soul this morning. I just can't help myself. You say, preacher, what happened in this story? The Savior reached down. And some of us, he had to reach way down, but aren't you glad he can reach way low? No matter how high you can reach, he can go as low as he needs to for you. Preacher, what did he reach down for in the text? Number one this morning, if you're a note taker, write this down. He reached down for a foreigner. Verse number 10 makes it very clear. Then she fell on her face and bowed herself to the ground and said unto him, Why have I found grace in thine eyes? That thou shouldest take knowledge of me, seeing I am a stranger. Come along here. Why do you even care? I'm, I'm foreign to you. I'm foreign into this land. I am but a stranger. I'm not of the chosen people. I'm on the outside with no hope, without God. I am of the world. Why do you care? She comes from a messed up place. She comes up from a defiled land. She comes from a place that God referred to as Moab. God called it his wash pot. We understand that a wash pot, before we had sinks, ladies, we had a wash pot. Oh, am I too modern? But before the kitchen sink, we were able to take a wash pot and set it down. And then we were able to wash all the dishes in that pot. And when we got done washing in it, what was left in there was pretty nasty. Uh, there was stuff on the bottom. There was stuff on the top. That was not the drinking water. The wash pot is something that was used to wash each and every single dish. And when you was done, you poured it out. And you tried to wash it and get all the scum and all the nasty off of it. God refers to Moab as his wash pot. You understand Moab came out from a ridiculous situation. It came out of a sinful lifestyle. It came from a sinful manner. This place is nasty. It's dirty. It's a defiled place. Moab from the very beginning is filthy simply because of its origins. You understand that Lot, when he left Sodom and Gomorrah, took his wife and his two daughters. The Bible says that the wife turned back to look at the city and God turned her into a pillar of salt. The Bible says that the daughters and Lot went into a cave trying to find refuge. The Bible says the daughters got the dad drunk and laid with him and had children with him. Filthy. Nasty. One of the children that were born was named Moab. This is where the land of Moab comes from. There's never a time you'll find Moab being said anything good of in God's word. Moab is a nasty place, a filthy place. It's a place where the filth and the scum resides. It is a wash pot. It is so nasty that it's called defiled from the beginning. That's where old Ruth's from. She's native to that land. She came from the nasty. She came from the worst. She even came from what the Bible refers to as a place of death. She has been to a place where not only has her husband died, her brother-in-law has died, and her father-in-law has died. Moab is a filthy, nasty place, and by the time we get to chapter 2 and verse 10, she looks at Boaz and says, Why have I found favor in thy sight? I'm a stranger. I don't belong here. I'm nasty. I'm foul. I'm defiled above all. Even in that land, they served other gods there. They did not serve the one true God. 
In that land is death. In that land is disobedience. In that land is defilement. I'm glad for this. That does not stop Boaz. You understand this morning? Does not matter where you came from, what you done. There's a Boaz in heaven that does not care this morning. There is a Boaz in heaven that looks down on you and sees you for the defiled, sees us in death. Hey, this world has been defiled from the beginning. For Adam and Eve, Eve did sin in the garden, and it threw us all into a tailspin. Honey, them little precious babies, they are precious in the sight of God and in your sight, but they were still born in sin, in need of a Savior. They were born in the world, a nasty death, defiled, disobedient place. And yet Boaz and God the Father does not look at the condition, but he looks at the person. I'm glad for a God that does not look at my surroundings. He just looks at me. Honey, if he was interested in my surroundings, why, I wouldn't be preaching this morning. If he was interested in my background, you'd find some other preacher here this morning. If he was interested in my past, well, I'd be in a lot of trouble this morning, Brother Troy, but here's the good news. None of that matters to him. Honey, you might be here this morning, and you might be suffering from a hangover. I invite you to come to church, whether you're hungover or not. Amen goes right there. The rest of the church may not agree with that, but this preacher says, come and sit with him. He don't care. You may be trying to get over the high and the fog in your mind this morning. Let me tell you something. You're invited here. Honey, I'd rather have the drug addict in here than have him out there in them streets. I'd rather have somebody messed up from the floor up in here than somewhere else in this world. I would rather have that which is broken here so when they have an encounter with God, he can fix them this morning. I'm glad for a God, even though we came to him as foreigners, he still brought us into the family. Boaz looked at her like it did not matter where she was from, but what mattered was where she, he was taking her. See, this morning you might think, well, it matters where I come from. It does not. It matters where you're going. To quote the old saying, the rearview mirror is a lot smaller than the windshield because it can't help what's behind you. But you can certainly keep an eye on what's in front of you. Honey, let me tell you this. No matter my past, no matter my background, no matter how many times I've failed, no matter what I've done, I've got a God that said, I forgive, I forget all that, and I'm leading you to a place called glory one day. And honey, you say this, well, the, the future looks bleak for this generation. Not for this one. My future looks really bright. It looks like a glorious place. It looks like the place I'm going, amen. It's got streets of gold, high, walls of jasper, gates of pearl. High, and most importantly, it's got the brightest light in the whole city. High, and the city is the lidden high, by the Savior that came down and reached down high, for me when I could not reach up. High, thank God I was a foreigner in his sight. High, but he reached down where I was and picked me up this morning. Uh, let me say this. Even though she was a foreigner... It didn't matter where she came from. What mattered is where he was going to take her. Let me stop and point out the very obvious. Boaz was squeaky clean. You understand that every dealing, if you read on the history of Boaz, every dealing that he had was above par. Everything that he done was right in the sight of not only God, but everybody he had business with. He was considered a great redeemer, not only to Ruth, but a great redeemer of the city of Bethlehem, Judah. Boaz was looked at and referred as the best of the best. Somebody needs to get a hold of that this morning. Honey, let me tell you this. Honey, the best of the best that this world has ever known came down to die for you and I. And he reached down for us in a time when we needed him most. I don't know about you this morning, but he's a God that's always on time. He ain't never been late for nothing. He's squeaky clean. He's the best there is, the best there was. And he's always going to be the best there ever was. I'm glad to report to you there's a God in heaven that loves you and he cares for you and he died for you and he became flesh for you and he does not care about your background he does not care where you came from this morning what he cares is you will respond to his call this morning Brother Troy just reach out and touch me just reach out and touch me just reach out and touch me that's not how God does you. God's not on the run from you. He's on the run to you. Honey, he'll get a hold of you and he'll hold you up in your... Thank you, brother. That was good. 
got your motor going. God has never come to you and said, get me if you can. You remember that insurance commercial where the old man with the fishing pole's got a dollar hanging on the end of it, brother? <laughs> he said, there he oh, you were that close. Oh, you were that close. Got to be quicker than that. That ain't how God operates. Honey, when you couldn't even see your way out, God was coming right where you was. <laughs> Honey, he ain't never ran from a challenge. <laughs> he ain't afraid of no devil. <laughs> ain't nobody that's ever scared him. <laughs> He'll go right where they are. <laughs> Honey, you think that your prayers ain't getting somewhere. <laughs> Honey, he knows where the drug dealers live. <laughs> he knows where the streets are. <laughs> he ain't afraid of an underpass. <laughs> he ain't afraid of the wrong side of town. <laughs> He'll go <laughs> because he's fearless. <laughs> and he's come to redeem even the foreigns of us. I was a foreigner. Yeah, he came to me, Sister Lindsay. I was foreign into the land. Huh? You and I this morning, you understand that we're Gentiles. We shouldn't even be here. Because his own refused him. We get drafted in, amen. Oh, thanks God for the time that he looked. Uh, honey, Boaz being squeaky clean and Ruth was dirty sounds a lot just like my story. I, I went from a defiled land uh, into the kingdom hand. Uh, honey, we know what it's like to live in sin. Uh, we know what nasty's like this morning. Uh, honey, our sin makes us nasty. Uh, our sin makes us disobedient uh, to the word of God. Uh, our sin uh, does not let us yield unto the will of God. But thank God for the day he reached down for me. Do you remember him reaching down for you one day? Not the preacher. I, want, I could reach down and maybe get you. Ain't a whole lot I can do for you. Do you remember the day he reached down for you? Do you remember where you were? Do you remember the place and the time huh, that he came by your way huh, and he picked you up huh, and he restored you? Huh? You may have been nasty and defiled and dead, huh, but God came by and gave you life huh, and life more abundantly this morning. Not only, not only did he reach way down for a foreigner, but look here. The Bible shows us that he reached down as a friend does. Look at verse number 13 with me. If I got time. Oh, yeah, that clock says God's time. Good. If you don't believe me, you can come look at it. This is what it says, God's time up there. Plain as day. Amen. Amen. Bible said, verse 13, that he reached down as a friend. Watch what verse 13 says. Then she said, let me find favor in thy sight, my Lord, for thou hast comforted me, and thou hast spoken friendly unto thine handmaid. Though I be not like unto one of thine handmaidens, you say, preacher, what's that mean? You know, you know church folk, don't you? That's you. Now, I know nobody in here ever thinks like this, but you know, there are some people that go to church and they think they're better than everybody else. That just shocked somebody. Help us, Lord. Take the halo and just set it in your pocketbook for a minute. You can take it back out when you leave. Some of us, when we see somebody coming... I ain't seen him in a long time. Look what she's wearing, my goodness. Look at that dude, think he's fooling everybody. I seen him last week on the street corner slinging. I know what he's up to. He thinks he's going to bring that mess in here. What? Church folk are supposed to be remembering that if God forgives, why can't we? That's church folk. But you know, the reapers, they've lived with Boaz. They are Boaz's personal reapers. The Bible shows us that she came and she sat down with the reapers. And Boaz's reapers probably looked at her sideways. Like, would you look what's coming in here? That old Moabitess, foreigner to this land. I mean, she ain't got nothing to offer Boaz. What's she doing here anyway? You know, church folk. What do they, what do they think they're doing at God's house? What do they think they're doing? I pray they're getting saved. Amen? Boaz reapers probably look at her sideways, but guess what? Boaz don't. Honey, you might be looking at somebody sideways today, but honey, God's never looked at them sideways. Honey, God's looked at them with undying love for them, just like he done you. People probably turned their noses up at her. You say, preacher, how do you know? If you go down to the Bible, the Bible says Boaz told those reapers, you better be kind unto her. You better be right under her. Treat her good. When you see her coming, make sure she's got what she needs. 
You know, sometimes a preacher has to remind church folk that we're still just people. And let me remind you, if you were here this morning, and you say, I can't go to church with a bunch of hypocrites, you better quit going to Walmart then. Don't go to Food Line. Full of them out there. Don't go to Ingles. They'll get you. Honey, we're all human beings. We all put our pants on one leg at a time. You need to understand something this morning. Even though people may look down at you, God's never looked down on you except for his mercy. Honey, when God looks down on you, he don't look down on you with condemnation. He looks down on you with mercy. He looks down on you with grace. And honey, let me say this under your heart this morning. He's the best friend you'll ever find in this life. You might be looking for a friend this morning. Let me introduce you to the best friend you'll ever know. His name is Jesus Christ. He's the dearest friend I've ever had. He saved my soul. He gives me rest in a time of weariness. Even though people turn their noses up at her, Boaz turned down his hand towards her. Honey, look here. Dirty looks and people talking about her. The servants probably looked at her like she was common trash. That's not popular preacher. It's the truth though, ain't it? Boaz didn't look at her with a dirty look. Boaz didn't talk trash about her. Even though the servants may have done one thing. You know, when you get, let me, let me take a time out. Time out. If your church experience has been something of a negative one because of the people going to church, honey, it ain't about the people when you come to church. It's about the God of the church. And if you're looking for hope from people and preachers, you're going to be disappointed. This preacher has the capacity to let you down at some point or another. But I'm talking about somebody who cannot let you down, will not let you down, huh? refuses for you to go down. Huh? Honey, when he stands you up, huh? he means for you to stay up. Huh? But if you do fall, huh? he is one that redeems and comes down huh? and picks you up this morning. Huh? I know you may have come to church. Huh? People look at you sideways. Huh? People talk behind your back. Huh? People whisper things as you walk by. Huh? But here's the good news. Huh? All God's going to tell you huh? is draw nigh to him. Huh? If we draw nigh to him, He'll draw nine to us this morning. I'm not only preaching, I'm telling you the truth this morning. Some of y'all get that in a minute. Boaz looked past all the mess. Troy, I like the hound out of this. He himself personally came and served her. Do you realize that God did not send anybody but the best for you and I this morning? Amen. Honey, I, it just gave me a heart good joy. He was sitting at the head of his table. All the reapers are there. She's at the back of the line. And rather than somebody, you go serve old Ruth down there. The Bible says he got up himself and went down where she was and reached her parched corn. Honey, gave her some bread, gave her everything she needed. Let me say this under your heart. Don't you worry about that young and that young and shout better than some of y'all this morning. Amen. Amen. Religion will let you down. Servants will let you down. But not all servants are like the master this morning. I'm sure she thought that because the way church folk had treated her, those servants treated her, surely Boaz wasn't going to treat her any better. Hey, let me tell you something. The best treatment you'll ever get will not come from a servant of God. But it'll come from the master. The best treatment I ever got did not come from a servant. Honey, I, all I'm trying to do is serve and preach to you what God has given under my heart this morning. I will not do you any good in this life. Honey, if I got the money and you need it, I'll give it to you, but that money will fade. I'll give you the keys of the house as long as you can clean it. Amen. You can come in for an hour or two. Will you help me clean the thing? No. You talk about killing a meeting right there. I ain't cleaning nothing, preacher. Clean my own house. But I'm talking about God who said that he'll give you everlasting life. That in his father's house are many mansions. That you've got a set of keys that he's got to wait for you. Uh, honey, I don't know what my mansion looks like, uh, but I'd take a cardboard box on the side of the street if he'd give it to me. Uh, I'm just glad to be there one day. Uh, thank God uh, that the servants uh, aren't going to get me where I'm going. Uh, but i got a master uh, who reaches down and gives me more than I've ever needed. He reached down like a friend. I'm trying to hurry. Watch here. Look, look, look. Religion will let you down. Servants will let you down. Everybody else in this world may just despise you, but the master will always love you. Don't worry about everybody else, by the way. 
You know, they accused Jesus in Luke 15 of being a friend to sinners. They said, well, he receives sinners unto himself and eats with them. Now, understand the difference. Jesus sat with them. He did not become them. Be careful who you hang out with. Say, well, I'm going to lead them to the Lord. <laughs> Be careful. Easy. You might sit down with them. You might tell them about the gospel of Jesus Christ. But if you stay down there, you get yourself in a mess. You ain't Jesus. Jesus can go down there and sit with them and eat with them. By the time it's over, they're converted. When Jesus sat down with a the sinner, they did not remain one. So if you can sit down with somebody and they're not changing and they're not getting any better and they're not getting saved, it's time to move on. That's free and extra. That's good preaching right there. Amen, preacher. All right. Watch here. Thirdly, watch. Watch. I'm trying to hurry. He reached down for her as a friend. He reached down to her when she was a foreigner. He reached down and he filled her up. Look at verse number 14. I like the hound out of this. And Boaz said unto her, At mealtime come thou hither, and eat of the bread, and dip thy morsel in the vinegar. And she sat beside the reapers, and he reached her parched corn as she did, and was sufficed. She got more than she needed. And she left. Honey, let me say this. She was filled up beyond measure. If you read it here, she's not going and looking for second supper. Anybody got teenagers? Ever had teenagers? My gosh, how in the world do you afford the bills? I ain't talking about the power bill. I ain't talking about the electric. I'm talking about the grocery bill. How in the world? I mean, out of house and home. That little slim thing right up there can eat his weight. In one sitting, 20 minutes later, Daddy, I'm starving to death. You got anything we can eat? I was like, you ate it all. I got to run the store. I don't know what you want me to do. I can't just, ah, there it is. I mean, you ever seen somebody sit down and eat a fight? When he eats today, you watch him. He'll go back there and he'll eat. Everybody watch Will today. He's going to go back there. He's going to fill his plate. He's going to eat every drop of it, set it down, give it five minutes of thought, go shoot a basketball, come back. We got anything left? That boy is a garbage disposal. You put it down there, it's gone. He sits at the table and waits for everybody else to get up. Start scouring, looking for plates. Ruth didn't have to do that. When he reached down for her, gave her more than she needed. She never one time again until the wedding feast is looking for a meal. She never one time is looking for seconds. She's never even gone back to the dessert bar again. She's got everything she needs. She's been filled up. What she found in him was enough. He filled the hungry soul with goodness. Honey, let me say this. Have you ever tried a field and you're still hungry? Have you ever tried gleaning in the field of life and wound up hungry? Have you ever tried to find the field of alcohol and try to fill yourself up? You're going to come up empty. When you get to the bottom of the bottle, it's going to be empty. I wonder what field you might be gleaning from this morning thinking you're going to find what you need, and yet by the time you get out of that field, you're still hungry. Can I say something under your heart this morning? If you've tried everybody else's field, why don't you try the Redeemer's field this morning? Honey, the Redeemer will make sure that you've got handfuls of purpose on purpose. He'll come by and drop off morsels even when you don't ask him for it. You been blessed this week, anybody? How many of you asked for it? He still comes by and just says, here, take it. I don't want you thinking that I'm going to starve you. I want you to have extra. You say, preacher, that just don't work out for me like that. I am on bone dry. I'll ask you this then. What field are you gleaning from? What field are you trying to find from? Honey, let me say this. The master shows us that when you try Jesus, the master calleth and we can come and dine. She got so much that she had enough for others. I won't take the time to read it, but if you go down to verse number 18 and verse number 19, she goes back to her mother-in-law, Naomi, and says, look what I got. I've ate. I'm full. Here's you some too. You know when God fills us up, you know why he does that? So we can take it to somebody else. You know what church is? It's a filling station. Honey, I know it hurts your heart to go to a gas station, but you've got to do it or you ain't going nowhere. Spiritually speaking, it's going to hurt your heart not coming to church and getting filled up. You'll be running on fumes by Monday. This is yes. Spiritually speaking, there's more people that are running around with their gas light on than I've ever seen in my life. 
when the filling station says you can come, and his is free. Boy, if it costs four dollars, you probably want to pay for it, wouldn't you? Huh? Honey, I found out the gift of salvation because it's free unto us. Went free to him, free to us. That people don't want it because it's free. They must have never met my dad. So if it's free, give me two of them. I, I, I want you to understand something about salvation. It is a gift from God that costs him everything, but unto us it costs us nothing. Freely imputed grace. There again, that's free and extra. I got to keep going. Y'all good? Y'all good? I'm getting hungry, so y'all shout, I'll preach. Amen. Jesus has more than enough to you to fill you up, to overflow. And watch this lastly, watch this. He reached down as a friend, reached down and filled her up, reached down to her as a foreigner, reached down and he changed her future. I won't take time to read all four chapters, but if you go to chapter four, I highly encourage you to go there. This is what you'll find in the last five verses. The last five verses simply talk about her genealogy. The Bible says that she begat a son named Obed. From Boaz and Ruth came forth Obed. From Obed came one known as Jesse. One from Jesse was known as David the king. Fast forward to Matthew 1. <laughs> Matthew 1, Sister Lindsay, this is what, I mean, I encourage you to do this too because it will bless your socks plumb the ground. Mine are already hanging. Matthew 1, the very first part of Matthew 1 talks about, and this is the genealogy of Jesus Christ. Do you realize there are only four women mentioned? Bathsheba is implied, but she's not mentioned. Oh, Rahab, the harlot, is mentioned, but you'll never guess who's there. There's one named Ruth that's in there. You say, preacher, why is she mentioned? Because she was an outsider, but she was brought into the family because of the Redeemer. Do you realize, Sister Lindsay, now this, this blessed me too. Watch here, watch here. Brother Norman, watch this. This is what happens. When heaven and earth passes away, the Bible will still remain. Do you know that for all time, Ruth will show up in the scriptures as part of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer? Even when heaven and earth passes away, it's forever recorded that she was in the family of God. You and I that's been saved, guess what happened? The darling Savior, the kinsman Redeemer, took a pen with a fount of blood, and he wrote our name in the Lamb's book of life. And when heaven and earth passes away, when he opens that book, guess what? Our names will still be recorded for all time. <laughs> oh, let me tell you a story. Play me something soft, son. I want to tell you a story. If you ain't getting what I'm saying, I'm going to give you one more chance. Even though she was an outsider, she was brought into the family of the Lord Jesus Christ, just like we were. Say, preacher, I don't, I, don't get the, I don't get the narrative this morning. I don't get where you're coming from. Let me break it down to a story. There was a boy one time who had a great daddy. And that daddy one day invited the preacher to come over to the house just to sit on the porch and pass the time. The preacher shows up, and sure enough, there's, there's a daddy with some good old sweet tea right there between them. And they begin to drink the sweet tea. And all of a sudden, the preacher starts noticing that little 13-year-old boy. Everywhere he goes, there's this little dog that just follows him everywhere he goes. That dog will chase him. He'll chase the dog. They're playing together. And he just, he's, he's honed into this relationship. And the dad keeps talking. He said, the preacher said, son, I, I don't mean to disrupt you, but that kid and that dog, they really love each other, don't they? He said, oh, yeah. He can tell you the story. Why? He said, there's a story I want to hear. He said, okay. He said, one day, about two years ago, our septic tank got real bad backed up. So we went out behind the house and we dug a hole. We got the lid off and it was hot that day. And he said, me and the little boy went inside and we got us some cold water. And as we were sitting there getting cold water, we started hearing this yelping sound, this yelping noise. And you'd only hear it for a little while, then it would quit. Then you'd hear it, then it would quit. Then you'd hear it, then it would quit. So they went outside and they grabbed their shovels, beginning to finish the work they started. The septic tank's just full of roach or you know, backed up. I don't know if you've ever been near a septic tank, but it's nasty. Filthy. Full of a bunch of mess. They 
looked over in there, here come a little feist dog that had jumped in and fell in and was swimming around. You know what a feist is? It's a mud. Not worth a whole lot. Good little yard dog keeps squirrels away. That's about all they're good for. Not a lot of them. You're not going to take a feist and sell it for three and four hundred dollars. It wasn't even theirs. It was a stray that wandered in from somewhere else. Good God Almighty, I don't know if I'm going to get through this. Fell down into the septic tank. And they looked down and they saw it. And the dad said, oh, man, what a mess that's going to be. The little boy looked up to him and said, Daddy, we have to save it. Daddy said, son, I'm not getting down in that mess. Just go back in the house. I'll call you when it's ready. And Daddy thought in his mind, that's the way he's telling the preacher, when the time comes, that dog will give out and tire out and get on the ground. And when we pump it all out, then it's going to be done. The little boy took two steps towards the house to go in. Sister Lindsay turned around. He said, no, Daddy. We got to save that dog. He said, son, I'm not getting down in that mess. If you want him, you'll have to go down there. Woo. Daddy went and got his ladder. And he lowered it down into that mess. That little boy climbed down into that mess. And all that filth and all that nasty. He reached over and tried to grab the dog. But the dog was even snapped at him. Try to bite at him. Finally, the boy reached over and got him and took him and put him under his arm. The dog was shivering. The dog was cold. The dog don't know what to think. That boy come up off that ladder, went over to the water hose and washed that dog down. Gave him one of the best baths that dog ever had. And he told the preacher from that day forward, that dog's never left that boy's side. That dog will fight you a little bit. He'll do whatever it was. And I got to thinking, there was a time in my life when I was in the septic tank of this world. And God the Father wouldn't come. But the Son said, I want to go get him. He said, Son, if you're going to go get him, you've got to go down there in that mess. You know what God done? He lowered the ladder. And from the balcony of heaven came God. And he got down in my mess. Got down in my situation. Got down in all that there was nasty. And reached out. And there were times I nipped at his hand. There were times I was scared and didn't know what to do. But guess what? He reached out for me. And he got me. What he done when he got me out? He just washed me clean. You say, preacher, what did he wash you with? The water hose? No. Nothing can wash away my sins like the blood of Jesus. Nothing can make me white as snow like the blood of Jesus. Maybe this morning you were here in this place. You say, preacher, I know what it's like when he reached down for me. If that's you, would you just stand to your feet? He's reached down for you at some point in your life. Just stand to your feet. If he hasn't, now you stay seated. If you remember the day he came, reached down for you. Now this morning, say this. If you don't remember the day that he came and he reached down for you, I got good news from authority on high this morning. He's still reaching. He's still got a hand that can reach down into the lows of lows. So while you're standing, let me say this under your heart. This is what we ought to do. We ought to be like that little dog. We were outcasts. We were nobodies. We were nothings. But we ran into somebody that gave us eternal life. Now I'm going somewhere that I never earned or never deserved. And the best way I can ever, ever show my gratitude is to do what Boaz, or Ruth done to Boaz. God, why do you even love me? Why do you even care? Guess what? When you come to him, this is what you'll find out. It's that word grace. You know, God's people need to be more thankful for what he's done in our lives. Can I encourage you to come to the altar this morning? If you've got some needs or some things you need to pray for, that's all well and good. But the Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. I wonder if I can encourage some church folk. Maybe I can encourage some people that were once lost that are now saved to come to an old-fashioned altar and just thank God for the fact that we're now in the family. While these are coming, you come. I wonder with head bowed and eye closed all over the room. While these are still coming, if you're coming, you come on. Nobody's looking. It's just me and you. The Lord's looking, and He knows this morning. I wonder if somebody be honest say, Hey, preacher, if I'm being honest this morning, 
I'm lost and I'm undone without God. I stood up because I didn't want to be the only one sitting down. Everybody else said they were standing up. If that's you, would you just slip up your hand? If you don't know Jesus is your Savior, slip up your hand and put it right back down. I'm not here to pick you out of the crowd, poke fun, make fun. I just want to pray for you because I remember what it was like to be like that. Bless that hand. Anybody else? Preacher, I'm not saved. I wonder maybe in this room. Preacher, I've been saved. I know that I've been saved. I know when he reached down for me, but preacher, I'll be honest with you, I've went back into the world and I'm living however I feel like. I'm doing things I should not do. I'm saying things I should be, shouldn't be doing. I'm doing life wrong. I'm not living like I should for God. If that's you, would you slip up your hand and you can put it right back down. I just want to pray for you and with you. Bless that hand. Anybody else? Anybody else? Boy, it'd be good to get honest with God. I wonder if in this room maybe you feel like a farmer in the church maybe you need filling up maybe you're running on empty maybe you're running low maybe you're at the bottom wondering if somebody can do something for you if that's you would you just lift up your hand right where you're at oh yeah bless that hand anybody I just feel like I'm empty preacher I feel like I'm at the bottom I feel like I'm low I'm looking up to see bottom while these are still praying, I wonder if those that raise their hand, if you can come to this altar. You will not pray by yourself. Somebody will pray with you. If somebody don't, I certainly will. Listen to me. We got so much to thank you for. These up here that are praying, those that were shouting early, you say, Preacher, I don't understand what it is. There was a time when the Savior reached way down for me. I was on my way to a devil's hell. He stopped it, brought me back. Let me tell you something about eternity. Eternity is too long to be wrong about this thing. And eternity is a fact, a true fact, that we'll all face one day. The reality of eternity is it's forever. The reality of eternity is that it goes on on, goes on, and it goes on forever. Let me say something to your heart. I want to be on the right side of things when I end this life. And I'll be honest with you, I don't want to wait till the end to live this, right, this life right. You can do it now. If I knew back then what I know now, I'd have done this a long time ago. Don't let the devil rob you of another second, another moment. I know we're going back here to get ready to eat dinner, but I want you to hear the preacher. You don't hear nothing else. Hear this. There's a reason why I'm always the last one to eat. I want to make sure others have more than I do. I want to esteem my brother higher than myself. And if you raised your hand or you need to pray, don't worry about me. You come whisper in my ear, preacher. I need somebody to pray for me. I, I'm lost. I raised my hand, but I wouldn't go. I'll pray for you and pray with you. We've got altars all over this place because I believe in the power of prayer. I believe in the holy ground of God to where you make your proclamation unto Him, where He reaches down for you as holy ground. You realize from a burning bush, He reached out to Moses, and before Moses could even walk up to Him, He said, Take off your shoes place in which thou standest is holy ground. We sure do love and appreciate each and every one of you this morning. Thank you for the time and attention. Uh, we pray that you stay with us. Help us eat all this food. Because if you don't, somebody's going to have to. And amen, the preacher's trying to watch his figure. I don't know if you can tell that or not, but he's doing his best. Amen. Uh, please stay. You say, preacher, I didn't bring anything. I didn't ask you what you brought. I just asked you to stay and eat. Amen. There'll be the day when we get to heaven where I want to see who refuses the serving of the God of heaven. Because I didn't have nothing to bring him, and yet he had everything to offer me. Boy, when he comes from his table, the Bible says in the marriage supper of the Lamb that he's going to serve us. Hallelujah. Tell me he's not a kinsman redeemer. Amen. We love you. We appreciate you. Again, reminder, uh, at the conclusion of the uh, banquet, we're in no rush and no hurry. But at the conclusion of that, we'll meet back over here in the sanctuary for the workshop.
uh, to get prepared and get ready for everything that we're going to do for the elections. Uh, again, if you were a Sunday school teacher or you signed up for the additional ministries, we just need you to be here. We're going to take about 30 minutes to go over the, uh, the workshop, uh, get everything kind of pinned down and ready to go. Then we'll be right, ready for choir practice at 4.30, no, at 5. And then we're going to go right into our business meeting tonight at 6 o'clock. Uh, we pray that you be here. Don't be one of those, well, I'd have done it this way. Well, you should have been here then. Amen. All right. We love you. Appreciate you. Thank God for you. All hearts and minds clear. Do you love the Lord? Are you glad you're saved? Are you hungry? A lot of shout going on right there. I like that. Amen. Amen. Brother Troy, will you just miss in a word of prayer? Say a blessing over the meal too, brother.